Hey everyone, hi, hi. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Shelly and today I am going to be talking through all of my ancient classic literature, the collection of ancient classics that I own. Now, if you are new to my channel, or if you haven't been around that long, you may not know that I've, this is a regular episode <laughs> on this, on this channel. I often see my book, my books in collections, in groupings, and I like to pull those collections off my shelves and talk through them with you. Now, when I'm talking ancient classics, I am thinking about classics, books written at least 1500 years ago. That's, that was kind of my cutoff. Like, I think my most modern book is 400 or 500, um, 580. So, um, if you're interested in classic literature and you like this video and you like the vibe that's going on here, I would encourage you to subscribe, stick around. Now, with, er, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. Some of my favorite channels are the ones that introduce me to new classic literature that I've never heard of or help me reconsider classics I've brushed off to the side. So in this video or in the comment section of this video, could you all put a suggestion down below of your favorite classic or one of the pieces of literature you think is foundational. It doesn't necessarily have to be 1500 years old, but the older the better, because in this way it helps me, you know, get introduced to books and literature that I haven't considered or thought about. And so I find that really, really helpful. And hopefully it can be an exchange. I might show you something that you've never heard of and you can in turn, you know, share with me something that I've never heard of. Um, but I think I'm going to go through the books that I have read first. I'm looking around because I all right, so I'm gonna go through the, the classics that I've read um, and then we'll go through classics that I haven't read or that are to be read. Up first with the literature that I have read, it's gonna be Sophocles and it's the Theban, the Theban plays. There's, so this is a bind up of three plays. I actually have three videos dedicated to each one, vi a video for each play, um, like my thoughts. And there was such lovely comments in those videos. It was just wonderful. Um, and this is um, Antigone, Oedipus the King and Oedipus at Colonus. Now Oedipus, what I knew of him was the man that killed his father and slept with his mother. But little did I know is that that's a Freudian concept, the psychosexual therapist or the psychologist, um, whatever he ended up, whatever he was, Freud, um, used Oedipus to help prove one of his theories. Um, and, uh, and that's really unfortunate because these plays really surprised me. Um, these plays, especially Oedipus the King, which is such a wild ride. It is entertaining and interesting and fantastic and so, so fascinating because the ancients were really interested in fate and really fascinated with the question that I think is at the heart of their obsession with fate is why do bad things happen to good people? And Oedipus is a lovable character because he is fated to kill his father and sleep with his mother. This is not a spoiler. And he tries so desperately to outrun his fate. And um, I'm not gonna spoil what happens, but it all just ends up being really juicy a lot of things to think about, a lot of food for thought. The play that I liked the most was Antigone because Antigone was at the heart of it, I think standing up for something that you believe in. Also something with the ancients is that they really valued closure with death, funerals. Um, and, um, and that comes out, that theme, that idea comes out with um, Antigone. And I just love that she's such a strong, 
character um, that you see this uh, woman standing up in the court and fighting for what she believes in. And then, um, and then Oedipus at Colonus is the one that really kind of let me down in a way. Um, it's just about like closure, I think. Um, and I, it's just like, it just didn't add a lot, but it did one really good line came out of it. And it was, um, the, what is it? <laughs> time obliterates, obliterates the gods fade and time obliterates. I'm going to read a, a short passage from Oedipus the King, which is the first <clears throat> in the way the chronology of this story goes. It starts off with Oedipus the King, then Oedipus at Colonus, and then Antigone, but the way that they were written was with Antigone first, Oedipus the King in the middle, and Oedipus at Colonus last. So this is the beginning. It is a priest talking, and they're going to be talking about the city of Thebes, and it says, Our city, look around you. See with your own eyes. Our ship pitches wildly, cannot lift her head from, from the depths, the red waves of death. Thebes is dying. A blight on the fresh crops and the rich pastures, cattle sicken and die, and the women die in labor, children stillborn, and the plague, the fiery god of fever, hurls down on the city, his lightning slashing through us, raging plague in all its vengeance, devastating the house of Cadmus. Um, and so what they're talking about is this curse on Thebes, and I just really, I thought that was such a great description of place. And um, this is just a, a wonderful cycle of plays to read through. Absolute delight. It says that Sophocles was born in 496 BC and died in 406 BC. So, um, so yeah, this is definitely very old, very quite ancient. <laughs> I just I want to mention that. I always think that's really interesting. Um, okay, so a book that has both BC and AD in it um, and spans a huge portion of time is um, the Bible, the Holy Bible. We have many of these in my collection. I grew up um, having the Bible read to me and I've read a lot of the Bible. Um, I'm not going to go too far on it, but since this is a, or far into this, but since it's a collection video, I wanted to mention this. This is an NIV version. We also have the King James version. There's just so many versions out there. Um, but yeah, it's again, since it's a collections video, I didn't want to leave this out. All right, next up we have Longus, who lived in 200 or the second century, <laughs> the second century, 200 AD. And this is Daphnis and Chloe. And they, it is a story about two babies discovered separately. And those two people end up growing up and falling in love on the country, you know, on the countryside. Um, and it is really about Eros, the goddess of love. And um, it's just like a very much an over the top love story, rhythmic and beautiful with a beautiful choice of language. It's also incredibly short. Um, and I read this a couple of years ago now, and it's one that stuck with me and that I've thought about quite a bit. And I'm probably due for a reread considering how short it is, but uh, just a delight. Next up, we have Liz Estrada, and this is by Paul, this is translated by Paul Roosh, but it's by Aristophanes. And this is, this is a play. There are three more plays, and actually we're gonna be getting into territory of books I haven't read yet. But the um, plays I haven't read is The Frogs, A Parliament of Women, and uh, Plutos, or Wealth. And the thing is, is that I started, I think, The Frogs, and I couldn't get into it. And then I started, and you would think it's a play, I would be able to just like push through, but I, I just couldn't. Um, and then I think I started A Parliament of Women, and I didn't like that as well. But Liz Estrada was a hit for me. Um, one of my top reads in 2021, I believe. And um, I just really enjoyed it. It's funny. It's funny. It's a lot more sexual than I thought it was going to be. But it is about the women really tiring so fiercely of their men fighting and losing their children, their sons, to war. And so they end up taking things into their own hands. And it's funny. It's interesting. It's a bit, surprisingly, it's a bit like crude or like, um, I don't know if crude is the right word, but it's just a little, it's a little bit more um, secular, I suppose, than I thought, than I thought it was going to be. 
And for whatever reason, that really that really delighted and surprised me. Um, I love a good surprise, and in that the surprise delighted me and it stuck with me it's one that i've thought about over and over again i'm about due for a reread but this is again you know, you're we're getting into the waters of which i've read some but i haven't read all so um i've read you know one play by aristophanes but i haven't read anything else by this playwright and then in terms of collection i actually have two versions of these next two books and that is the iliad and the odyssey this is translated by robert fitzgerald and then i also have um the iliad and the odyssey this is by homer translated by robert fagels if i haven't mentioned the translators i will leave it in the notes in the description box down below in the show notes down below i will make sure that i list out all of the translations it's, it's a big deal when you're talking about the ancients because it could give a really different feel to the literature to the story um, one translator may not jive with you whereas another one might um, for example i didn't love these translations actually this is a box set that my husband got that my husband bought us um bought for himself and i actually read quite a bit of the iliad in this version and then decided to switch and so i switched to the fitzgerald edition and i just i love these books if you know anything about my reading taste um, i love the iliad i thought it was fantastic brilliant interesting not so much about the uh the log of ships which in which you know you're just talking about the different ship names but um a fascinating introduction to Greek literature definitely the Iliad and um, the Odyssey this is the Iliad the Odyssey <laughs> trying to keep myself straight the Odyssey is definitely more episodic um, and also foundational um, there were so many things that were, that you could connect to modern literature modern re references modern movies um, to the Odyssey and I was able, able to make a lot of connections so just delightful reads and delightful pieces of literature to have in my collection. Now we're in the waters of or in the section of the video in which I haven't read <laughs> I haven't read these books. One of them is The Aeneid by Robert Fagels. This is part of the box set which I will show you right now. All right so what we have here this is the box set it's a really beautiful I mean truly beautiful um piece to own like this is just a really cool thing to have in my book collection so homer's the iliad and the odyssey is um was written or he was living during the time of the 7th century bc whereas the aeneid is by virgil and that is that he was living during like 70 bc so quite i mean the aeneid it's very modern <laughs> compared to the iliad and the odyssey but robert Fagels translated all three and it was done in this beautiful box set and I really love it and I have sort of tentative plans to read the Aeneid later this year. Next up I have a Roman dramatist, <laughs> Terence, who lived, which I'm reading in the back, who lived um, during 186 BC to um, 159 BC. So um, in the first, first uh, century, first century BC um, and these are plays and I saw this on the Ram Jack at the Rambling Reckon Tours channel and he was talking about how funny and modern these plays feel and also Steve Donahue um, echoed that saying that you know weirdly um, Terence feels very contemporary so in this there are I don't even know one two three four five six six different plays interesting so i keep on meaning to pick this up but i am sloughing it off and i don't know why but i really need to finally get around to reading it especially since it has such it's comedic and i i tend to quite like um ancient comedies they just they're so well ancient work in particular but the comedies there's something really fresh about it now it could be the translation this translator is betty radis um but i don't think it's just the the I don't think it's just the translations I just think that sometimes humor is timeless <laughs> and things if they're speaking about something that feels fundamentally true to our human nature um, to us as individuals um, that you know doesn't get lost with time unlike you know the the line time obliterates you know maybe that maybe humor maybe some humor stands the test of time but um, I really I ought to just like 
I got to just get to this and um, then I'll be able to judge for myself kind of deal. Next up, this is again my husband's copy of a book, but it's Ovid's Metamorphosis. Now this is translated by Rolfe hum Humphreys. Rolfe Humphreys. And let's see how this, let's how this is an epic poem. And I know that there's a new translation out. <laughs> I can hold books up. <laughs> my one job up here, is, my one job on Booktube is to hold up books and chat and sometimes even that is a struggle. Um, but yeah, so let me see. I'm gonna read the first bit. Maybe it'll get me interested. So, my intention is to tell of bodies changed to different forms, the gods who made the changes. It will help me, or I hope so, with a poem that runs from the world's beginning to our own days. And then it says creation. Before the ocean was, or earth, or heaven, nature was all alike, the shapelessness, chaos so-called, all rude and lumpy matter, nothing but bulk inert, in whose confusion discord discordant atoms warred. There was no sun to light the universe, there was no moon with slender silver crescents filling slowly. No earth hung balanced in surrounding air. No sea reached far along the fringe or shore. Gosh, that's beautiful. Oh wow. Okay, now I'm actually now I'm really interested. I'm like, oh, that was that was really lovely. That just gave me a bit of a thrill. Okay, I'm going to pop this closer to the top of my list. Um, I've been wanting to read an eight. Um, an epic poem. I don't know. I feel like that's what's missing in my life lately. But we're going to talk about my reading plans soon for the summer. And I'm just, I'm just stacking it on. I mean, I just, I have too many plans. But anyways, this, that really made, that really piqued my interest. Okay. Oh, and I also want to say, I'm trying to remember dates because I do think that's important. So Ovid was living in 31 BC. So in a lot of ways, he was a contemporary of uh, Virgil. So the Aeneids by Virgil. Um, is that right? Yeah, Virgil. Um, so he was a contemporary of Virgil, though. Who knows if especially during those times, I probably had no overlap, but I just wanted to make that mental note in my head. Again, another one of my husband's books, you know, he was, he's just so much, he was, he was so much more refined than I was. <laughs> um, uh, now I have my own collection of ancient literature, but together I'm realizing, I'm like, no, that was his, no, that was his. He's always just had, um, a, a peaked interest in, uh, ancient literature, but this is, um, Lao, Lao Tzu by Tao Te Ching. And this is going to be, I really don't know much about this. This is Wise Sayings um, compiled by this writer um, that were about, that were written about the fourth century BC. So it's gonna talk about personal conduct, government, morality, it has a mystic tone, and it advances the philosophy of meekness as the surest pass, path to survival. Gracious me. Okay, and this again was translated by DC Lau. So let's see what this sounds like. Hmm. The way that can be spoken of is not the constant way. The name that can be named is not the constant name. The nameless was the beginning of heaven and earth. The named was the mother of the myriad creatures Hence, always rid yourself of desires in order to observe its secrets, but always allow yourself to have desires in order to observe its manifestations. These two are the same, but diverge in name as they issue forth. Being the same, they are called mysteries. Mystery upon mystery, the gateway of the manifold secrets. Interesting. Okay. So maybe, you know, when I'm feeling like I want to dip into some poetry, I'll pick up this. Next up, we have The Histories by Herodotus. Now, I've heard that this is a very gossipy, <laughs> a gossipy approach to history. And thus, um, because of its gossipy nature, it's very entertaining. And um, I've heard great, great things about this. Incredibly readable, funny. 
um, just has a total personality, Herodotus does. This was, he was living in the 400s BC. So I think that's, you know, an interesting note, but I just, I've heard, this is on my 23 classics to read in 2023. I haven't yet to pick it up, but let's, um, let's just read the first bit together now. All right, here we go. Herodotus of Halicarnassus here displays his inquiry so that human achievements may not become forgotten in time and great and marvelous deeds, some displayed by Greeks, some by barbarians, oh my gosh, may not be without their glory and especially to show why the two people fought with each other. Mm. So immediately he's like getting into the drama of the barbarians and the Greeks. All right, interesting, okay. Hmm. All right, well, it's still one that I wanna read. It's on my list and I'm thinking about it. So I'm gonna set this aside and talk about one that I actually read in college and I'm definitely due for a reread and it's Plato's The Republic. Hmm. Now I'm gonna have to find when he was living. Okay, so Plato lived between, you know, 428 and 347 BC. Now this is gonna be talking primarily about politics and ethics and um and i really the reason why i have this so it's translated by desmond lee and the reason why i have this in my unread pile is because i know i read this in college like we had to read lar either this whole entire thing or large chunks of it but i was like 15. <laughs> i was really young and i don't know if in this it t talks about the allegory of the cave but I remember distinctly the allegory of the cave as my English teacher spoke of it and it blew my mind. So I have this in the unread pile because I feel like it was so long ago that I read this that I reading it now, I would feel like a totally different person. Um, but yeah, it's just, and the thing is, is I, I like ethics and I like politics. So I feel like it's one that I would really enjoy. And then I have two more to go. I have, oh gracious, I keep on. Okay, so we're getting really modern in, in terms of my collection. So we have Confessions by St. Augustine. Augustine of St. Augustine of Hippo was a doctor of the Latin church and he was born, he lived or was born in 354 AD. So, you know, quite, I mean, you're talking like years and years and years, like so long um, after like, you know, something like uh, the Odyssey or the Iliad. So I don't really know much about this whenever I read this because it's confession. So I think the way that Steve Donahue talked about it in which I'm just going to borrow what he said or paraphrase in the best way that what he said, but it feels as if St. Augustine wrote it, the, wrote it in a way where he didn't think anyone would would pick this up ever. Like he didn't think that anybody would read it. And so he he's talking about people and his internal life in such a raw and open way that when you read it, it feels shockingly modern. Um, truly, I think probably the actual definition of a confessional, but one where you have no awareness, the, the author has no awareness that people would be reading it, um, especially hundreds of years later. And so, you know, the, like if he knew or had some sense that people would, some sense as in like some inclination that somebody would be reading it, he probably wouldn't have written some of the things that he wrote. And so, um, and so, yeah, so that's, that's what I've heard about this. And so I've wanted to read this again. It's on my 23 class six for 2023. Have I read it now? But I would like to. And then finally, one, the thing that I think is actually the most modern, I'm going to have to, I keep on having to look up when these folks lived. Okay, so 121 AD is when Marcus Aurelius lived, and this is Meditations. Again, this is my husband's copy. You're getting us an insight into his, just his genius, <laughs> his good taste in books. Um, and it's just, I know that this is um, actually more similar to Lao, Lao Tzu, which is, you know, um, little phrases, ideas of conduct and how to how to be in the world and how to exist, but done in a poetic short form. And so, you know, it has, let's think like number, th so it's set up, let me show you. 
it's set up in those little snippets and it's like that throughout so it, it doesn't I don't feel like it would be a hard or even a long read and so in number three it says my mother her reverence for the divine her generosity her inability not only to do wrong but even to conceive of doing it and the simple way she lived not in the least like the rich okay I mean so I don't I don't know I hope I really just don't know much about this book um, and I've heard mixed reviews on it so I don't I just don't know but I should probably <laughs> I should probably dig in since it's in my collection and I have a vested interest in, in the ancient classics okay that is it that is it um, I hope that that was informative in some way uh, I just I do love looking at my collection and digging in with you all digging into my own to what I own because then it really quells the desire to want to buy more. I sometimes I get this bubbling interest to just go and, and buy, you know, like I want to just own every all the books. And then I realize, no, Shelly, Shelly, <laughs> you have such a beautiful collection of books. So many of so many of which you have not read. And when you read the first line, i.e., when I read the first line of of its meta metamorphosis, I'm like, why haven't you read this girl? Like, get it together. So um, instead of going out and wanting to buy more, I just uh, I, I dig into my own collection, and it really um, fuels my gratitude for what I have. So that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here and spending this time with me. I really appreciate it, and I will see you all in my next one. Bye.